Okay, we're in Studio One here, and we're going to go over some of my favorite keyboard shortcuts. So let's just pull in an instrument like Mai Tai. And first shortcut I like is, well, obviously, the star key on your numeric keypad is record. So you hit that, recording starts. Hit the space bar, recording stops. Very simple. So that's the star key. Second key is once you're playhead gets somewhere into the timeline here and you want to bring it back to one easily you don't want to just keep clicking up here and one it's tough so you you want to use the comma key on your keyboard which is the arrow backwards arrow not the backwards arrow but the comma key has a little bracket arrow thingy above it pointing backwards that takes you to the beginning of the song so i'm always hitting the comma to come back to the beginning of the song so that's the comma all right so say you do have something that you like that you played or you programmed in let's just draw something in here so you have something you like i love this about studio one there's not a lot of shift and then hitting keys like if i want to duplicate that i don't hit shift d i just hit straight up d boom so you could duplicate very quickly in studio one by hitting the d key d like dog all right, and then, well, let's, let, no, let's do that again. Let's duplicate all these. Say you want to select all of them, okay, and because you want to move them instead of just moving one at a time or you don't want to drag this over and select them all, you want to use a keyboard shortcut. Just like in a lot of other programs, Control-A selects everything. Control-A like Apple. And then say you want to record something, right, but your metronome's not on, and you don't feel like going through the task of coming all the way down here and clicking the, ar the triangle. Just hit the C key, because that stands for click. C key turns metronome on and off. You can see it going on and off here. C for Charlie. And then what I also like to do a lot of times is turn on the pre-count. Like, I got the metronome on here, and that's cool, but if I want to record... I want it to count me in four clicks before the recording actually starts. That's the pre-count. So that's shift C like Charlie. And then that's this little circle here that turns on when you hit shift C. So now when I record by hitting the star key, it's going to count off four times. Two, three, four. So I'm... I got something that I played in there, but it's a little off time. I mean, you could look at these. They don't start right on the line because I'm a human and I can't follow a click track as good as a robot. So if I play it, it sounds off. Well, no worries. Just hit Q. Like I said, I love that you don't have to hit shift a lot in Studio One. Q stands for quantize and quantize takes everything you got here and puts it to the grid. Watch this. Q. Boom. Everything's perfectly timed now. Boom. So that's Q. All right. Another key I use a lot is F3, function three. That turns on the mixer because sometimes I don't feel like coming all the way to the bottom of my screen and you can't see it where my head is. But right behind my head is a mix button. F3 turns the mixer on and off if you want to turn the mixer on. Uh, F4 pops open this inspector on the left hand side, which gives you a lot of data about the track you're, you're using. Same thing as clicking the I up here. Oftentimes, I'll click the I. I don't know why I don't like to hit F4, so I shouldn't even have included it in this video. And then I want to talk about some tools that I use. The number keys uh, above, above your letter keys on your keyboard, like one, two, three, four, your numbers, um, correspond to these tools up here. Now, before Studio One combined these two tools into a handy little combination called... Um, it, the arrow and the range tool, if they're linked, um, before they even had that in Studio One 6, it was, uh, you had to hit one for this, two for the range tool, three for the cutting tool. And I did a lot of one, two, and three. Like, one is the pointer tool. That's where you move things around. Two I hit for the range tool if you want to select a bunch of things. And three is the knife tool if you want to do some chopping. But now that they linked one and two... 
let me undo that chopping. Um, now when you hold your cursor on the upper half of the track, it turns into the range tool. And in the bottom half of the track, it turns into the pointer tool. Don't know if you guys knew that. So pointer tool is great because it does this. Range tool is great because it selects things. But range tool is also cool and does a little bit of chopping too. So even though I say I used, used to use one, two, and three a lot, I hardly use them now that these are all combined. Because if you just take your crosshairs of the range tool and you don't select a range, you don't do this, you just double click on any spot of a clip, it actually snips or cuts that clip night with a knife. So then you can move it around with the pointer tool. So Studio One made it very uh, user friendly now to be able to manipulate, manipulate your audio. So uh, that's some more keyboard shortcuts. Let's see what else I use. Obviously space bar, start, start and stop. Um, I think those are the main ones I use um, on a very consistent basis. So, uh, you know, a more highly produced YouTube video would have those letters pop up on the screen as I talk about them. But this is what you get with me. You know, we're, we're low, we're low budget. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. Anyway, I hope these helped. Um, they help speed up my workflow a lot. So enjoy, make cool music, Studio One, and I'll talk to you guys later. I forgot about one, so I'm adding this to the end of the video. So check this out. If you have a clip selected and you want to loop it, in other words, when it gets to the end of the loop or the clip, you want it to go back to the beginning, you have to draw a loop region over that clip. Well, that's pain in the butt a lot of times because you have to be precise and you got to use your mouse and it takes time. One way I like to do it quickly is by hitting the letter P like Paul. And whenever you hit P, Whatever clip you have selected, it will automatically draw the region over that, the loop region over that clip. And if you have multiple clips and they're all selected as well, you hit P, it will draw the loop region over whatever you have selected. That's very handy. But the loop region isn't on, it's just selected, it's there, it's gray. We need to turn the loop region blue to actually make it work. And the way you do that is with the shift key. The shift key that has the question, not the shift key, take that back, the slash key. It has the question mark over it. It's right next to shift on the right-hand side. Shift is on the right-hand side. Your period key is on the left-hand side. So this is a, the slash key with your question mark over it. You click that and it turns on the loop region. So now the loop region's activated. When you get to the end of it, it is on and working. So I use this a lot. Like if I'm drawing a, a clip or I, I'm programming something in, I just hit P. Loop region goes over it and I make sure with the slash key that it's uh, selected and it's blue. If it's not blue, it's not going to work. Um, the slash key is also on your numeric keyboard too. If you have a numeric side keyboard, um, you could use the slash key on that. That does not have a question mark over it. So that is what the last one I wanted to talk about and I think that's it. See ya.